On a certain type of island, there are two types of people, knights and knaves. Knights always tell the truth, and knaves always lie. Suppose we encounter two different islanders on the island one day. The first islander says that the other one is a knight, and the second islander says the two of us are different. What can we say about these two islanders? Are they knights or knaves, or can we not tell? Pause the video and think about this. To make sense of knight and knave problems, we're going to learn about mathematical propositions or mathematical statements. A proposition or a mathematical statement is a sentence or expression that is definitely and determinably either true or false, but not both nor neither. Let's look at a couple of examples to determine if the following are propositions or not. Let's go to the store. This is not a proposition, it's an imperative statement. It cannot be determined to be true or false. Six is an odd number. This is a mathematical proposition because it can be determined to be false. The sky is beautiful. This is a subjective statement, so it is not a proposition. The real valued function f of x equals 5x is continuous. This is a proposition. As long as we know the definition, we can determine if it's true or false. And finally, every even integer greater than 2 can be expressed as the sum of two primes. This is a mathematical proposition, even though currently we actually don't know the truth value of this proposition. For notation, we usually let capital letters like P, Q, R, S, and T represent propositions. We can create new propositions from known ones using logical connectives. The three primary logical connectives that we will look at are not, and, and or. Because mathematical propositions are either true or false, we can define the logical connectives in terms of their truth tables. The first connective that we will look at is the negation, or the not connective. The proposition not p has the opposite truth value of the proposition p. Because p can take on two values of true or false, then not p can have two values as well. In particular, for not p, we take the negation of true in the one case and the negation of false in the other case. But the negation of true must be false, and the negation or opposite of false must be true. This is the truth table for the not connective. The not connective is a unary connective because it goes in front of one proposition, but the conjunction or the and connective connects two propositions, so it's a binary connective. The proposition P and Q is true only when both of the connected propositions are true. To build the truth table for this connective, we need two columns for each basic proposition P and Q. The third column is for the connective. P and Q each can take on two values, so together there's a total of four possibilities for their truth values. Now we connect them with true and true, true and false, false and true, and false and false. According to the definition, this is only true if both pieces are true, which happens in the first row, but not the second row, not the third row, and in the fourth row, both are false. Therefore, TFFF is the truth table for the AND connective. Just like the AND connective, the disjunction, or the OR connective, is a binary connective. The proposition P or Q is only false when both of the connected propositions are false. To build the truth table, we again use two columns, one for P and one for Q, and a third column for the connective P or Q. There are again four different possibilities for P and Q to take on truth values. We can then go row by row and connect them with true or true, true or false, false or true, and false or false. But the only way that this is false is if both connectives are false, and that only happens in the final row. So the truth table for P or Q looks like this. So we have seen the three primary logical connectives. They are the negation, which is a unary connective, the conjunction, or AND, which is a binary connective, and the disjunction, or OR, which is also a binary connective. Here are the truth tables. Propositions that don't involve connectives will be called atomic. 
and those that are built from atomic propositions and connectives will be called molecular. Let's use the truth tables for the three primary connectives to find the truth table of a complicated molecular proposition. Let's find the truth table for the proposition P or Q and not the quantity P and Q. For this truth table, there will again be two columns for the atomic propositions and one column for the molecular proposition. The four rows correspond to the four different possible truth value scenarios for P and Q. Now, we can simply put the truth values for each of the atomic propositions in their appropriate place in the appropriate row. Then we will go through row by row and we will apply the elementary truth table operations for AND, NOT, and OR. For the first row, we can see that we have true or true, which is true, and true and true, which is also true. In the second row, we have true or false, which is true, and true and false, which is false. Then false or true is true, and false and true is false. And false or false is false, and false and false is false. Then we can revisit and we can negate true to be false, negate false to be true, negate false to be true, and negate false to be true. And finally, we apply the AND connective one more time, resulting in false, true, true, false. This is the truth table for the molecular expression that we started with. The final new concept in this video is how to define logical equivalence using truth tables. And along the way, we'll learn the De Morgan's laws. We will say two molecular propositions, R and S, are equivalent, provided R is true exactly when S is true. That is, when R and S have exactly the same truth table. Let's fill in the following truth tables and determine if there are any equivalences. We will look at four truth tables. The negation of P and Q, the negation of P or Q, not P and not Q, and not P or not Q. Pause the video and have a try at this yourself before coming back. Hopefully you had a go and you realize that each of these truth tables can be obtained by applying the AND and the NOT or the OR and the NOT connectives successively. Once we're done, we end up with the four truth tables as shown here. Now look carefully at the four truth tables and see if any of the columns match. In particular, the first and the last truth table both match that they say false, true, true, true. Therefore, the negation of P and Q is equivalent to not P or not Q. Similarly, the inner two truth tables have the exact same truth values, false, 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 true. In this case, then, we say that the negation of P or Q is equivalent to not P and not Q. These two laws together are known as the De Morgan's laws, and they show how negation interacts with both the AND and the OR connectives. Let's use propositions and mathematical statements and truth tables to show one method of solving the Knight and Knave problem from the introduction. Recall that every islander is either a knight or a knave, which means they either tell the truth or always lie. In this instance, we have two islanders. One says that the other islander is a knight, and the other one says that they are both of different types. To use truth tables, we will let proposition P stand for islander A is a knight, and proposition Q stand for islander B is a knight, and we will build the truth table for P and Q with its four rows. Now we note that person A says islander B is a knight, and this is just repeating Q, the proposition, so we can just replace it with its truth column from before. Person B says something a bit more complicated. They say that we are different, but you can interpret this as not P and Q, or P and not Q. This is true because not P means A is a knave, and Q means B is a knight, and P means A is a knight, and not Q means B is a knave. 
we can go through the four rows and see that the truth table for person B's statement is false, true, true, false. Now that we have the truth tables for the statements, we can remember that person A said the first statement. And we can go by row by row and determine if there's an inconsistency in the truth table. In the first row, person A is a knight and said a true statement, so there's no problem. But in the second row, person A is a knight and said a false statement. This can't happen. In the third row, person A is a knave and said a true statement. This can't happen. And in row four, person A is a knave and said a false statement, so this is okay. We can then do the same thing with the second column, which is what person B said. In the first row, person B is a knight and said a false statement. This can't be. In the second row, person B is a knave and said a true statement. This can't be. And in the third row, person B is a knight and said a true statement, which is okay. And in the last row, person B is a knave and said a false statement, which is also okay. But notice that after this computation, we see that the only row that's legitimate is the final row, where P and Q are both false. But P and Q both being false means that both islanders are knaves, so both islanders must be knaves. Now that you know how to solve knight and knave problems using propositions and truth tables, I'll leave you with one to try for yourself. Suppose we encounter two islanders on the island, and the first one says, I am a knave, or the other one is a knight. And the second islander says nothing at all. Can you determine anything about these two islanders?